What is up, you guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we are going to be talking about everyone's favorite topic, and that's color match. Color match is by far the most difficult um, mode in Hue Forge there is. It took me probably like four or five months of just getting used to Hue Forge before I even decided to open Color Match and try it. All the tutorials that I've seen have been kind of confusing and haven't really helped, and there's some reasons to that. But today, instead of giving you a step-by-step -step tutorial through Color Match, I'm going to show you how I would color match an image, and then hopefully that will give you some perspective on how you can also color match your image. The reason step-by-step -step tutorials don't work with Color Match is because a lot of it's just very different. Every image is unique. Everything is a little bit different. And so a step-by-step -step tutorial that works for one image may not work for another one. And so today we are going to be diving into this image that I found that I really like. I really enjoy this image. It's really cool. I think it's got a lot of style and um, I really like the color match opportunity because we have a lot of different things going on in this image. Color match is broken up into two different sections. You have your mesh core, and then you have your color core. In most scenarios, your colors are going to match up, especially if you have a simple image, but not always, not always, especially depending on the TD, which is how translucent or opaque your filaments are. So. I exclusively use Bamboo Lab filaments. That's what we're going to be color matching today. If you have other filaments, great. You can use those, you should use those. Um, I will just be using Bamboo Lab filaments. This image is also available right now on my Maker World and merchant licenses are available on Patreon. All right, let's start color matching this thing. We have lots of different colors going on here. Um, and this turquoise is a very, very, very strong color. I know my turquoise that I have with Bamboo Lab. I believe it's got like a one point, yeah, 1.4 TD. So it's very strong. I'm going to move that down to the bottom. Now you can see that we can switch between our mesh core and our color core. And I'm only going to be viewing my mesh core so that we can get all of our colors that we need from this image over over here. And so I am going to move this uh, turquoise down a little bit. I'm going to move black down a little bit. Let this turquoise be fully um, saturated. That's what this little line here means. It means that it is fully saturated. That's as bright as you can get that color. And so we are going to leave that there. I'm going to leave this blue gray here for now. Um, the, the hammer here has some gray in it. So we're going to leave that there. I'm going to move this white up for now. And then I'm going to grab this background color and I'm going to put it up at the top. You can see we have our image has changed over here. That's okay. We're not going to worry about this left side image quite yet um, because we are not there yet. Now we have some interesting gradients going on here. I know that I want the background to be yellow, even though it's orange in this picture. I think yellow is going to work the best. And so um, I'm going to keep this here. It's orange, but I, I think we're going to end up using some yellow. I know we're going to need some brown. I'm going to drag some brown over here. I'm just going to toss it up here for now. And then we might even need like, like another orange here. We might need a beige. I'll just grab a skin tone. Okay. Okay. So i think we're looking good here the image is a little pixelated here i'm not 100 percent sure that will translate um over to our final product but um we will we'll see so i have all my colors over here and i know that because my left image over here is looking pretty good now it's not perfect um, you can see that the shoulder sleeve over here has some blue. It's got some turquoise bleeding through. And then the hammer definitely has some blue and browns kind of seeping through. Might bring in just another gray to help to help with that 
there. Bring the turquoise down ever so slightly. Okay, I don't mind this. I'm gonna put spike removal on fast. We're gonna have it smooth out. Ah, uh, no. Yeah, spike removal on fast. I think we're, we're good. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with what we have over here. I will say I personally want this Hue Forge to be a little bit on the thicker side. I want it to, to have more of a card feel, especially because down here, you can see we lose quite a bit of detail and this is going to be a little bit flimsy down here if the the base is is just that that first layer of black and so i'm going to come to blend depth here and i think i'm just going to up it to two we're just going to up it to two and that's going to give us a little more wiggle room here with our with our layers so we can get a little bit more blending here. It will make your hue forge a bit thicker. So you see our mesh height went from, uh, what was it at here? We were at 1.76. So it went from 2.16 and we move it up to two and it goes up to 2.48. So if you're trying to fit something into a frame that has a very specific depth requirement, make sure you know that um, before you change your blend depth. All right. Now for the color matching part. This is the easy part. Now we need to get this to look the way we want it to look using the TDs, all right? All of these with the little, I don't know, it's hard to describe. They have little angles here. It's a pointy end. These are fake filaments, okay? And they all load in with a TD of one. If it's got a flat end here, that means it's a real filament that's come from a filament over here and it will load in the TD that you use. So I'm using blue gray here and the TD is three. That's a real filament. This filament, this brown here is just a TD of one. And so now we need to play around with our real filaments and actually get it to look, look how it needs to look. And so we're gonna start by just lining it up how I have it on the mesh core and see if we can't get something looking good. So I'm gonna put up top, I want that to be yellow, not orange. And so we're gonna put basic yellow up here. Actually, no, I'm gonna use sunflower yellow cause it's a little darker. And I think we, um, I think we can get that to look, to look good with the sunflower yellow. Okay. Then I'm going to load in a beige. And the problem with Bamboo Labs beige is it has an 8 TD. That is really, really opaque. I have a feeling we're not even going to use the beige. I'm going to toss it in there just in case. I'll load in our orange. And then I'm going to grab not a matte brown. I want it to be a little more translucent. We're going to grab a basic brown for now. We're gonna load it up in there. Okay, and so now you can kind of see where we're at with just kind of matching up our, our uh, filaments side by side. I have this gray here. Um, I am gonna leave it in because you see when I take it out, it actually changes the mesh core but I like the way that this blue gray is interacting, especially with this hammer. So we're gonna leave this gray in for now, even though it's not going to have a filament counterpart here on the color core. Again, I can't tell you step by step exactly how to do that for your own image. But for this image, this hammer is really, really tough with its different gradients of gray. And so I'm gonna grab the darker gray for these areas and then a lighter gray for this area, even though my color core may not reflect it in the final image. All right, now it's time to play around with our picture. You can tell that the skin tones are not quite right. The hammer is not quite right. And the hair is okay, but it's not quite right. So we are going to bring our brown down a little bit because I want the hair to be more orange. We want the brown to come out of our hammer. So I'm gonna bring brown down a little bit and I'm gonna bring our gray up one as well. Yeah, I think I like this version better than this version and this is really just tweaking around with the image and seeing what works well 
like I said, this beige, I'm going to keep the skin tone beige in on the mesh core because there is a skin tone color that we need. But I'm going to see what it looks like without the beige. And you actually, when we take the beige off, we get a way more accurate skin tone than we did with the beige. And so I'm going to leave the beige off and that skin tone looks much, 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 much better than what it did with the beige. And we can see what it looks like. Actually, I'm going to take the beige out on the mesh core as well. I think that looks fine. Okay. Now you can see that we need to play around a little bit more with this hammer. And if I'm honest, guys, I want a little more blending capability with my color cord. So I'm gonna come to blend depth and I'm actually gonna up it to like 2.5 and give myself a little more wiggle room to play around with the mesh core and see if I can't get that gray just like that out uh, or the brown out of my hammer. And so we tweaked around with our oranges, keep our skin tone. We can actually bring our turquoise up just a little bit because I want that to be as saturated as possible there. And it's really just like, I mean, looking at it, do I like this version better? Do I like that version better? And I think, I think I like this version better. We get more highlights up here within the, in the hair. Um, yeah, I like that version better. Now we have a couple options here. I am liking how the image is, is coming along. I, I do, I do like it. The problem that I'm having here is with this top um, mesh here, because you can tell that there's some weird layering going on and I'm not a huge fan of how it looks all pixelated up here. I can bring my white down and we can get rid of a lot of it, right? If I bring it down a little like to here, I get rid of all of it. But then if you look at the eyes, now we have yellow in the eyes and I don't want her eyes to be yellow because they're not, they're white. And so I want her eyes to look correct. And this is, this is how her eyes should look. I have a couple options. This top color, sunflower yellow, it's got a 4.4 TD. We could look for a color here that has a much, much lower TD. Um, and I don't, I don't know if I want to do that, but let's just, let's just see. No, <laughs> we don't, we don't want the pink. Although if we could get a flat pink back there, that would look really cool. I, I, I don't mind how that looks. We're going to come back to sunflower yellow. I'm going to move the white up ever so slightly here. keep coming okay so you can tell we got a lot of the yellow out but it's not perfect let's play around with our brightness just a smidge okay I have a song by a guy named Aha Gazelle stuck in my head, but I'll get copyrighted if I start singing it. Y'all, we are we're there. I mean, this looks really, really good in my opinion. The eyes look correct. There's a little too much turquoise coming through. Okay, that looks good. Leave spike removal on. Oh, let's try it. Let's just see what aggressive looks like. 
No, we lose way too much detail. I actually kind of, I might want to leave that on none. We lose a lot of detail with, with it on. All right, and I have to a point to where I'm happy with it for the course of filming for 10 to 15 minutes. I'm pretty happy with how this looks. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven unique colors. We can click on describe here and it pulls up a window. I don't know why my screen capture software doesn't pull it up, but it tells us all of our layer swaps. We have 37 layers. One thing I did forget to change is static depth. Um, it's not a huge deal, but I, I prefer working in static depth than dynamic depth so that our our height remains the same throughout the entire time that we are working on our image. And there we have it, y'all. This is a color matched image that I, I'm a really happy with. I, I really like it. Now we could up our blend depth even more if we wanted to, and we could really start to play around with some more colors, um, even working on getting some of the shadow under her hand a little bit more accurately, taking some of the grays out under her hand here and getting more browns in there. We definitely could start to work on that, but those are such, such minor details that I think for this image, it's not going to make a major difference in its finished quality. This image is 100 by 200. It's a really cool form factor. It's a cool size. You can put two of them side by side and make it look like a 200 by 200. Um, there are some really cool frames out there that will fit a 100 by 200 photo um, or Hue Forge. And so they just look, they look really good and they're small enough to display like on a desk or something like that as well. And so that is how I would color match this image. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven unique colors. I'm really happy with how this came out. And hopefully, as you saw the way that I processed through color matching this image, you will begin to become a little bit more comfortable color matching your own images. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into today's video. If you enjoyed it, please smash that like button. I would really, really appreciate it. It helps the YouTube algorithm. I'm trying to get back into the game, trying to, um, yeah, get Hue Forge into as many hands as possible because it's a really cool software. And I hope that you found this video somewhat helpful on your journey to learning how to use color match in Hue Forge. Shout out to all my patrons. Thank you guys so much for your support, all 80 something of you guys. You guys are awesome. I appreciate your, your support. It helps me do what I do. If you want a merchant license to my work or you just want the exclusive products that I make like this uh, Nobura Kugasaki, then check out my Patreon. It will be linked down in the description and I will catch you guys in the next video. Until next time, y'all take care and God bless.